Hey guys, welcome to the Silver Report Uncut. If you're catching the show on SoundCloud, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to build it up and also take a minute, come over and subscribe to our backup channel on Library. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a true freedom of thought platform. We're up over, I think, 416 subscribers. It might seem small. It's exciting for me. Come over, join the party. I'll leave a link in the description. And let's talk about Goldman Sachs right now. Now, we do know a big tenet in all of this was that they need the corporations to make these changes on their own. And that was in that website, that was in the white paper, there was a big common constant theme that the corporations are going to need to be involved and this is also was in that preparedness meeting as well. So the corporations, there are some that are more essential than others apparently and there are some that are more critical in regards to decision making. So Goldman Sachs is at the top of the ranks, also known as Government Sachs, because most of the people that ever get into positions of power are either previous, uh, you know, even partners at the bank, all different types of powerful people that work at this bank very frequently end up in the government and vice versa. Very frequently, people who do the favors for this bank, when they are completed, they go and end up working at the bank at a job where they actually don't do work and they're just given hundreds of thousands of dollars in repayment for their service. They are years and years of service to Goldman Sachs and the other banks. Now, didn't you ever sit back and wonder why these banks are allowed to just freely commit crime and no one ever goes to jail? Rarely. Rarely one banker may go to jail, but he definitely won't be somebody in an important position. None of these banks ever get arrested. They have a protection. They have a tax that is granted to them as some of the most powerful corporations in the world. They have a tax that they are allowed to pay, which is considered their license to commit crime. They are never going to be held accountable. They are allowed to commit the largest crimes in history. The amount of money that these banks have funneled, stolen, I mean, isn't that really benefiting them all by artificially suppressing interest rates? Because what do we see happening? There's a couple interesting phenomena happening. So people, when interest rates drop really low and housing prices rise, they can go and withdraw money per se, especially when there's low interest rates by refinancing on their home because other people have sold homes in the area recently where the price has appreciated, they can then go have their home revalued. So say you paid a few hundred thousand dollars for your home, a couple of people sell a house for 500 grand, then you go, you get your house revalued, you re refinance, and then you have access to what would appear to be free money. Now, the thing is, while it may seem like free money for the consumers, it's really free money for the banks. They're making a fortune off of all of this refinance activity because, of course, think about the name, refinance. And they're making a ton of money off of the stimulus and all of the bailouts and the PPP program. And, you know, they talk about how much of a failure this program was in regards to the corruption, the stealing. But it's just crazy that right now we look out and they have this whole do as I say, not as I do kind of atmosphere. But it is good some of the things we're seeing coming out of Goldman right now because it seems to be a total disconnect with the plan. And that's great. Goldman Sachs is a pillar. So what they said, they don't think this work from home is going to be continuing. Now, they were some of the first organizations that went out and announced that they were going to be doing a permanent work from home. However, David Solomon, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, he's always been kind of adversarial in regards to working from home. And he was discussing how they were losing out on productivity and even, you know, really digging into that. So let's talk about how there is a lot of trouble going on in the bank's ranks, especially among the top management positions. They're very upset with the CEO. They're upset with his management style. And it's essentially gotten to the point where they've begun to leave. Many senior executives at Goldman Sachs have been abandoning the bank in mass. One of them recently would be the head of the consumer bank, Marcus, who left. And we really need to know, you know, what's going on under the surface because the CEO, he seems to be implying that there is like a total breakdown in regards to remote work. And he pointed out a couple examples, but then some of the top managers also pointed out him as an example of where the problem is because everybody seems to be celebrating 
celebrating with their time a little bit more than they're working. Now, there has been very, very impressive earnings from the bank recently. Profits have been soaring. But their CEO, he came out and it says that his leadership style is causing widespread angst among the staff. Now, the part where he is starting to break away from this main narrative, he publicly came out and said that the working from home is an aberration that needs to be fixed and informed the staff during an all-hand Zoom call on Friday that the bank's thousands of workers who've mostly been working from home will be back in the offices by the summer. He also continued, this is not ideal for us. This is not a new normal. It's an aberration and we are going to correct as quickly as possible." Unquote. Now, believe it or not, the work from home theme is supposed to be a permanent one. It's a permanent designation and they're trying to convince these companies to establish the infrastructure to facilitate more people working from home. It's not that I think that's a bad idea in today's day and age with the internet and with so many people working online. Not that I think it's a bad idea. In fact, it could considerably lower costs for many companies. But as they're pointing out, the issue is productivity. And when you look to hire a manager, say you're the CEO of a company and you want good managers, you want people that are kind of mean and they don't take crap and they don't, you know, play it soft with anybody. Because when you have a manager at your business who is not tough on the employees, typically people don't work as hard. They don't listen to them and they don't respect them. Now, some employees are just simply great. Not all employees are like this. They're not all uh, difficulty. They're not all looking to take advantage of their employers at every opportunity they can. And it's not like it's always unfounded. Many uh, employers are taking advantage of their you know, employees. So it's just kind of a payback. But there are many, many people who simply can't work without somebody cracking behind them, telling them to work harder and keep on track and to keep focused. It's unfortunate that some of those people can't work without a boss and that would necessarily mean that you know this is a problem for many types of banks and what they're experiencing at Goldman Sachs is they're living more of the celebrity vacation lifestyle than doing their work now Bloomberg really just tore into them and what they said they interviewed two dozen current and former senior executives and what they found was that they are all very frustrated now this could be the plan from the elite to unseat David Solomon because David Solomon doesn't want to continue going on with the work from home. That's all possible. This whole news story, since it's being promoted so much, since they're coming after David Solomon so much, may have all been created for this purpose. Now, they say they're frustrated because he's kind of got this do as I say, not as I do approach. Uh, they say that he has been toggling to the Hamptons taking the company-owned aircraft, the private jet, for frequent getaways. And the big problem was he got very upset at some of the employees. He had some employees on payroll who showed up to him at a bar out partying. And he pointed out and introduced himself and showed him some of the other employees that were there with him. And this was all while they were supposed to be at working. And it made him very furious. And then they came back and they got upset because they said, well, he was there too. Now, I wanted to bring up the comments from Nell Minow. They advise institutional investors on corporate governance issues. They are the vice chair at Value Edge Advisors. And they said, quote, It certainly looks terrible. There is a Mary Antoinette aspect to it, unquote. Now, the bank came out and they were defending Solomon. And what they said was, quote, When he's away for a weekend, David continues to work, pays for his travel, follows the health protocols and is back in the office first thing on a Monday morning. Now, if you didn't catch it, it wasn't a couple weeks ago when Solomon, he was exposed in national news as he was DJing a concert where attendees, they were, you know, forgetting the guidelines and the New York state officials were very upset with Solomon because rather than leading one of the nation's largest banks, he's DJing at parties now, believe it or not, the bank's revenues have surged since this crisis began. It has been a real moneymaker. Their revenues actually increased 12% ever since we entered the recession. Now, that is truly an unprecedented rise. And you look at the growth in 2017, 2018, 2019, it was all around the same amount. But you see, 
This recession was something special for the banks. Something wonderful happened for them during this time, and they enormously increased their profits, along with the other wealthy people in the world. I thank you guys for stopping by and joining us. As always, stay safe.